Hey, what's up everyone? It's time again to traverse the never-ending hallways of PT to try and decipher some of its many leftover mysteries. In this video, we'll be attempting to determine the role that Norman Reedus' character might have played in the full game, as well as his role in PT. Since there's a lot of obscurity with our main character and his purpose, even more so than usual for PT, I've compiled a list of five theories that we'll go over today. Even though there's not a lot to go off of in the game as far as clues, there are a lot of theories about this character. So what we'll do is go through these theories, discuss their merits and potential drawbacks, and then at the end I'll summarize which one I personally believe is most likely and why. Also, there will be spoilers for Silent Hill games 1, 2, 3, and 4, but an especially big spoiler warning for Death Stranding, since we'll be discussing the ending of that game too. But before we get into the theories, there are a couple relevant details in PT that we should go over first. The first detail is that Norman Reedus is officially our playable character in PT. You can see his full model during the end teaser, and that it matches the outfit of our player character in the demo. Beyond this, we can see Norman's face. It's typically obscured in the mirror during our playthrough, and although we can kind of see his face between the gaps of the smudges, the YouTube channel Lance McDonald was able to position the camera lower to confirm that it is indeed Norman Reedus that we're controlling throughout PT. I'll also have a link for Lance's video in the description below if you'd like to check that out later. But the second important detail is that our player character doesn't seem to match the environment of PT. What I mean by this is that the home in PT seems to exist somewhere around the 1970s, judging by Lisa's clothes, the old radio, and just the style overall. Through my Google searching, 70s era transistor radios seem to match closest to the one found in PT as well. However, Norman's attire seems to match closer to present day styles, leading many, including myself, to believe that Norman's character doesn't belong in this setting and might not be associated with Lisa's haunting. Furthermore, Norman's isn't the face that we see in the pictures around the home. This is important because during the initial playthrough, I think a lot of us assumed that our player character was the murderous husband. However, knowing now that our player character and the husband in the photo don't match, that throws a wrench into that theory. Although there's a theory later that might have an explanation for this. But the general assumption regarding PT is that we are experiencing the husband's personal hell in Silent Hill, which is basically a looping nightmare confronting what he's done. This is important because it might suggest that our player character in the full game could be capable of exploring the personal Silent Hills of others. This goes back to the title of Silent Hills plural, instead of just Silent Hill. This seems to suggest that the full game would involve exploring multiple versions of Silent Hill. This could be multiverses, but I think it's more in line with the subconscious symbolism of each individual person within Silent Hill. What I mean is that in previous Silent Hill games, it's suggested that people can perceive Silent Hill differently, and that the way Silent Hill manifests to you is symbolic of your own internal turmoil. The best example is in Silent Hill 2, where our lead character James Sunderland sees a lot of monsters, each with a symbolic meaning. For example, the nurses are scary, but also wear very revealing outfits. Without giving too much away, this is believed to be due to James's sexual frustration, since he couldn't have sex with his wife while she was sick in the hospital where he probably lusted towards the nurses. In contrast to this, we meet another character named Angela, who is surrounded by fire. At one point, we come across her and she mentions that it's always like this for her, suggesting that her version of Silent Hill is constantly in flames. So in Silent Hills, we could be playing as a character who is able to traverse the nightmares of others and witness another person's Silent Hill. If that is indeed true, then that would explain how our player character is walking through a hell that doesn't seem to be crafted for him. But anyway, those are the details I wanted you to be aware of before the theories, so let's get into the first one. You got fired, so you drowned your sorrows in booze. She had to get a part-time job working a grocery store cash register. Only reason she could earn a wage at all is the manager liked how she looked in a skirt. You remember, right? Exactly ten months back. So one of the most common theories that I've seen floating around online is that Norman Reedus is actually the grocery store manager mentioned by the fetus. The idea being that Lisa's manager was interested in her, and either Lisa was interested too and had an affair, or that Lisa was sexually assaulted. Either way, the result could have been a pregnancy. If the husband learned about the affair and the child, this could have been the catalyst for the husband to commit the murder out of aggression. By the way, in my part 2 video about the murderous husband and the talking bag, we go over his potential motivations for the murder, so I'd recommend checking that out if you're interested, but for the purposes of this video, we'll leave it at that. So if Norman is the grocery store manager, then there's also the question of why the manager would be in this loop. It's clear that this isn't the manager's personal hell, since the fetus speaks to us in a way that is aimed at the husband, specifically saying you in reference to our alcoholism and how we were fired from our job. 
I think the real basis for this theory is in the mismatch between the husband and Norman Reedus again, the idea being that Norman's character is someone who is traversing someone else's nightmare. This is the husband's time loop, but somehow Norman is exploring it too. Assuming this theory is true, it also begs the question of why Lisa would kill Norman, if he is indeed the grocery store manager. Well, it's a pretty easy answer if it was legitimately sexual assault, then yeah, he deserved to be stuck in that loop too. But we don't know if that is indeed what happened. Lisa might have been a willing participant in the affair, in which case it wouldn't really make sense for Lisa to want to kill him. In this scenario, the only rationale that I can come up with is that Lisa might be caught in a residual haunting. This is when a ghost isn't really acting on free will anymore, and is instead acting out the same loop over and over regardless of who's around her. If you've seen the Haunting of Bly Manor, this is similar to the Lake Lady. So basically, Lisa could be stuck in a loop of her own, constantly attempting to kill her husband, but not able to recognize if someone else enters the loop, she would just attack no matter what. So overall, I like the grocery store manager theory, I think it's one of the most fun theories and would make for an interesting twist in the full game, but ultimately, it's not one that I'm completely sold on. I think this theory makes the most sense if the manager had sexually assaulted Lisa, but I find it hard to believe that a video game company would make us play as a character who committed such crimes. It just seems like a tough sell. I could be wrong though, since Silent Hill has been known to approach taboo topics and make you confront them, so who knows. But on the flip side, I'm not sure why the manager would be here in Silent Hill if this was a mutual affair. If the manager wanted to be with Lisa and his child, I guess he might have come to Silent Hills to seek them out, but the end teaser seems to suggest a more sinister tone based on a child's implied revenge towards a murderous father. If the full game would have focused on this aggression from the murdered child, then I'm not sure how the grocery store manager would have come into play. This theory is also pretty centralized on the story of Lisa, but we don't know if she would have played a major role in the full game or not, or if she would have even appeared in it outside of this demo. However, I'd say this is one of the most fun theories I've seen for Norman Reedus' character, and I can't fully debunk it, so it's a possibility. Police arriving on scene after neighbors called 9-11 found the father in his car listening to the radio. Several days before the murders, neighbors say they heard the father repeating a sequence of numbers in a loud voice. They said it was like he was chanting some strange spell. There was another family shot to death in the same state last month, and in December last year, a man used a rifle and meat cleaver to murder his entire family. In each case, the perpetrators were fathers. State police say this string of domestic homicides appears unrelated, though it could be part of a larger trend such as employment, child care, and other social issues facing the average family. Theory 2 is another one I've seen floating around, and it's a pretty cool one. This theory goes in line with the opening broadcast that describes the three separate murders in a short span of time. It stated that each murder was perpetrated by fathers, and the police theorized that factors such as childcare and employment could have contributed to it. It seems that there is a trend of fathers murdering their families, and nobody is quite sure why. We go into possible motivations in much more detail during my previous videos, but it seems that these fathers are being manipulated by an outside source. For example, that sinister radio voice and 204863. Don't touch that dial now, we're just getting started. Retrieved the rifle and shot his wife as he was cleaning up the kitchen. You can't trust the tap water. Old son came to stomach. 204863. It's also possible that each of these fathers are in difficult positions that make them easily manipulated. Factors such as unemployment and alcoholism plague Lisa's husband, and that sinister broadcaster gives a call to action to rise up against the society that has pushed them down, as we can hear over Lisa's murder. In my first PT video, I theorized that the Lisa murder might not be any of the murders described on the radio broadcast and might have occurred after those, continuing the trend of murders. Theory 2 seems to go along with this idea in that Norman Reedus might be the next father to be manipulated into killing his family. If there is an evil entity that is brainwashing vulnerable fathers, then maybe Norman fits the criteria and is next on the list. This could also be a reading to the You've Been Chosen line at the end of PT. You've been chosen. 
Part of the theory is that Norman has been brought into Silent Hill and is witnessing the hellish loops of other murderous fathers before him. If this theory is accurate, then perhaps this is a test of sorts for Norman to break the cycle. As far as why Lisa would want to still kill him, well, it could go back to that residual haunting idea, or others have suggested that Lisa might see you as a threat to her child or your own children, and that's why she tries to kill you. Overall, I think this is an interesting theory and has some merit to it, but since there's such little information about Redis's character, it's tough to say whether or not this is accurate, but I think it's a compelling idea. I walked. I could do nothing but walk. And then, I saw me, walking in front of myself. But, it wasn't really me. Watch out. The gap in the door. It's a separate reality. The only me is me. Are you sure the only you is you? Okay, so Theory 3 might at first seem like a big stretch, but let's discuss it for a minute. I've seen a few variations of this theory, but the gist of it is that Norman Reedus is actually an adult version of the fetus, potentially through some separate reality or Silent Hill magic. Just a side note, it might actually be possible to bring someone back from the dead in Silent Hill, since James attempted to do so in one of the many endings in Silent Hill 2. I'm not sure that applies here, but I figured I'd mention it just in case. But anyway, Other Realities could be a reading of the Silent Hills title, and could be a way to bring in another Norman. Reincarnation has also been hypothesized to go along with this theory. Honestly, this theory makes my head hurt, but previous Silent Hill games have had crazy shit like this happen before. For example, Alessa splitting herself into two people in the first game, and you might recall that being adapted in the Silent Hill movie too. Basically, Alessa has supernatural powers and was raised in Silent Hill by a cult who intended for her to give birth to a demon god. To prevent doing so, Alessa split into two selves, one trapped in Silent Hill, while the other was found and raised by Harry Mason, the protagonist of the first game. It's confusing, but my point is that there have been two versions of one character existing at the same time in Silent Hill stories. Also, big massive spoilers for Death Stranding incoming, since a similar thing is revealed at the end of that game. Mad Mickelson's character, Cliff, is trying to kill you the whole time to get his baby back. And throughout the game, everyone assumes that the baby on Norman's chest is Cliff's child, but it turns out that Norman is actually his son. Cliff just didn't recognize him because Norman grew up. This could have been a plot point pulled over from Silent Hills into Death Stranding, since it could have been revealed in Silent Hills that you are the adult fetus. Plus, this would explain Lisa trying to kill you, since she doesn't realize that you're an adult now, similar to Cliff in Death Stranding. To further add to the theory, Norman Reedus' actual birth year is in 1969, which if I'm accurate about PT taking place around the 70s, then this would put Norman at about the right age to be this baby. I think this theory sticks with me more since it aligns pretty closely to Death Stranding, the game that was made instead of Silent Hills, and I can never help but wonder what aspects of Death Stranding were taken from the scrapped Silent Hill game. Trying to make sense of it through the demo is tough though. For example, the voice at the end of the game states that he'll be coming back, and it seems to have malicious intent. I've always assumed that voice is the fetus, since it's the same voice when we talk to it in the bathroom. But guess what? I will be coming back, and I'm bringing my new toys with me. You got fired, so you drowned your sorrows in booze. She had to get a part-time job working a grocery store cash register. The voice is also much deeper than you'd expect, indicating that it must have aged up somehow. So similar to a good Alessa and bad Alessa, we could have a similar thing going on with Norman. Although I don't think the fetus voice is Norman's voice, so I'm not sure if that still applies. Alternatively, I suppose it's possible that Norman Reedus could be the father reincarnated since the father hung himself after the murder. After killing his family, the father hung himself with a garden hose they had in the garage. If he was reborn shortly after this, then Norman's real-life age would still match up. Also, the fetus states that during the teaser that he's coming back, so perhaps the father is too. Overall, I don't know that I can fully go with Theory 3, since it's kind of tough to prove, but I could totally see some kind of weird crazy twist like this occurring in a Silent Hill game, let alone a Kojima game, especially since it was used similarly in Death Stranding. <laughs>
Theory 4 is more of a personal theory since I haven't seen it mentioned online, but basically it's that Norman Reedus is some kind of detective investigating disappearances in Silent Hill. I don't have a lot to back this one up, but I always just got that vibe from him. His appearance with the leather jacket seems like the typical cool guy outfit you'd see on TV for a lead detective or private investigator. This idea has been established in previous Silent Hill games too, namely Silent Hill 3 where Detective Cartland mentions that he's been to Silent Hill before investigating a missing persons case, with the assumption being that that was probably to look for James Sunderland, the protagonist from the second game. I'm not saying Norman is Cartland, just that there is a precedent for detectives going to Silent Hill in search of missing people, and that there could be a lot of those. We've mentioned the growing trend of murders stated by the radio, and if this trend continued into present day, then Norman could be someone tasked with investigating one of the more recent murders. Also, I think it's possible that these murders took place in Silent Hill, since one of the data mines for PT shows license plates from Maine on the vehicles outside the house. Maine has served as the setting for Silent Hill in previous games, and with Lisa's house leading right onto the streets of Silent Hill, it's possible that her murder took place in the town. The radio broadcast also mentions that each of the murders took place in the same state, so Maine could be a hotbed for murders. If Norman is in fact looking into a more present-day murder, then his investigation could lead him down the rabbit hole of other similar murders that took place around the time of the PT radio broadcast. I personally believe that Lisa's home and murder are only one of many different hells Norman would have explored in the full game, again in reference to the Silent Hills title. I think Norman investigating different disappearances could also be why he's able to traverse other people's versions of Silent Hill, since it would allow him to relive some of these memories experienced by the murderous fathers and their families. So in PT, Norman could just be walking in the shoes of the husband through his personal hell, while experiencing what that husband sees throughout his never-ending loop. That could be why Norman is still being talked at like he was the murderer even though he doesn't fit the description of the photos or the era, and why Lisa would still try to murder him. Eventually, we would be able to leave the loop and the house since it is likely only one stop on our journey through Silent Hill. Even though this theory puts Norman in somewhat of a heroic role within Silent Hill, I wouldn't be surprised if we started to learn that he has some hidden inner demons as we moved through this story, and that he ultimately has a closer tie to the town than we originally expected. If the town is bringing him into its nightmares, it's likely that he was called to Silent Hill for some reason. Don't get a holy on me, James! This town called you too! So I know I said that this theory was my own, which makes me pretty biased, but I do think this could be a cool avenue to go down in Silent Hills, and it would have allowed us as the player to explore Silent Hill and uncover clues like a detective would. A drag. Every day he'd eat the same kind of food, dress the same, sit in front of the same kind of games. Yeah, he was just that kind of guy. But then one day he goes and kills us all. He couldn't even be original about the way he did it. I'm not complaining. I was dying of boredom anyway. But guess what? I will be coming back, and I'm bringing my new toys with me. So the last theory is admittedly the least fun and more of a cop-out, but unfortunately it might have some realism to it. This theory is that Norman's character model in PT is just a placeholder model in the demo for the husband, and Norman has no tie to Lisa's story in the demo. Instead of creating a full new character model of the husband for the demo, the team may have just used the Norman Reedus character model since it was already developed. To go along with this, I recently saw an intriguing panel where Norman Reedus described the first time he saw PT after it released. Yeah, this is uh, super scary. Did one. you play yeah. it, Norman? Did you ever I, play that? I, yeah, I did play it and actually saw that uh, the rendition with me in it. He came, he flew with about six people from Tokyo to San Diego for Comic Con and showed me it on an iPad. Yeah. And I was, I was like, what the? It's scary. It was super scary. Norman's use of the phrase, rendition with me in it, leads me to believe that there was at one point a rendition of PT that didn't involve Norman. I could be reading too much into his statement there, but it definitely struck me as interesting. If Norman's character model was just a placeholder in the demo, then that could explain why his face doesn't match the husband in the photos, why his attire doesn't match the time period, why he is spoken to directly, and why Lisa still tries to kill him. This would also mean that we are in fact playing as the murderous husband, and not a separate character entirely. On the flip side, instead of it being the character models that were altered, it could be the photos, swapping out Norman Reedus' face with an unknown guy. 
The original intent for PT was to appear as a random game released on the PlayStation Store from a new indie developer, 7780 Studio. Kojima mentioned that the game's graphics were intentionally dialed down so that it would look like a small indie developer created the demo and not a major gaming studio. The whole purpose was for players to uncover the mystery together and earn the reveal that this mysterious demo is actually for a new Silent Hill game made by a major developer. Seeing Norman's face in these photos could have given the surprise away, so the team may have just put in a picture of a random husband alongside Lisa to keep the players in the dark. This also goes along with Norman's face being obscured in the bathroom mirror. Whether or not it's the photos editing out Norman, or Norman's model in place of a random husband, this theory would allow us to conclude that our player character in the demo is the husband who murdered Lisa. Either way, Theory 5 fits pretty nicely with the story, since this would give Norman a greater tie to the fetus and the teaser audio about Dad being such a drag. Honestly, this theory allows a lot of the pieces to fall into place, and I think it has a lot of merit. The only problem with this theory is that it only describes Norman's presence in PT, but doesn't really apply to the full game. We know Norman would have been the main character of the full game, but we don't know anything about him. So his function in the main story is still up in the air and might be better described by the prior theories. For example, it could be that both Theory 5 and Theory 1 are correct and that Norman's model was used in the demo and has no ties to Lisa, but it would have been revealed in the full game that Norman is the grocery store manager. Who knows? So even if Theory 5 is the correct one for the demo, it still wouldn't take much away from the other theories since it doesn't necessarily debunk them for the full game. But at this point, I want to sum up what we've gone over so far and give some final thoughts. So it's tough to say what's truly going on with Norman Reedus' character due to such little evidence both in-game and out. As far as which theory I think is most likely, I'm honestly not 100% sure on any of them. Occam's Razor states that the simplest answer is often the correct one, and Theory 5 is definitely the simplest, where Reedus' character is the murderous husband, but his face just doesn't match the photos for reasons relating to hiding the star's face and it just being a demo. It's the least fun idea, but I could totally see that being the case. However, it still bothers me that Norman doesn't fit the time period set in the PT house. I also can't help but feel like the clues in the house are intentional and that the photos are meant to indicate that we are indeed playing as someone who isn't Lisa's husband. So I don't think Norman is the same husband and I personally believe more in theories where Norman is a different character who is traversing the nightmares of others. For instance, Theory 4 where Norman is a detective, or Theory 2 where Norman is the next in line of murderous fathers. Out of the five we discussed today, I think I lean more towards Theory 2, since in PT we are in the shoes of a murderer's father, which could be symbolic for the role Norman will be tempted to take further into the game, but I'm not sold on any one theory in particular. There are a couple baseline aspects that I think are true though. Norman isn't the husband from the Lisa loop and is instead a separate character. Norman is someone from present day experiencing this either as a nightmare or as someone who has the capability to walk through the silent hills of others. Also, Norman will most likely have demons of his own to face through the game which could be loosely tied to Lisa's story, and any of the first four theories could account for this. I didn't mention this in the previous theories, but I also think Lisa's house could just be a nightmare sequence set to kick off the full game. Viewer Sage of Sorrow reminded me in a comment that Silent Hill games 1, 3, and 4 all started with a nightmare sequence involving the character experiencing Silent Hill, dying, and then waking up. The story would eventually involve them winding up in Silent Hill, almost as if the town had called to them. The same thing could have ended up happening for Norman. His nightmare could be the PT demo where he is stuck in these looping halls and ends with the you've been chosen call, at which point he could either continue following a blood trail like we see in the teaser and presumably die before waking up, or just wake up after leaving the house. But overall, I think there are still a ton of interpretations for Norman's character in PT. Unfortunately, given the information we have now, it's really tough to say what our main character would have been up to in the full game. These were the five theories that I've liked the most, but I'm sure there are countless other theories that exist. If you have one of your own or aspects you'd like to modify from the five today, I'd love to hear it in the comments below. Part of the reason I started this PT analysis series on the channel was to explore PT again and share ideas with others in hopes of working together to put some of these pieces in place. I'm not married to any one of these theories I've listed today, so maybe if there's a better theory that comes to light or new evidence, I might make a part 2 video on this topic and revisit it with updated information. 
In the meantime, I've been really pleased with all the awesome comments I've been receiving on the previous videos, so I definitely intend on keeping this PT exploration series going. Next, I'm thinking it would be fun to dive into that super creepy TGS demo for Silent Hills, since I think there are a lot of interesting details hidden within that. But if you have any suggestions for topics you'd like to see covered, I'd love to hear that too. But anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.